What's up? I'm Austin Griffith. Happy Bowtie Friday here with the Build Guild. We're going to do some Build Guild stuff. We're going to guild build. Uh, so first, I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. Let me make sure I don't have any weird things up here. All right. Share. Here we go. Okay. So the first thing we're talking about is like meta Build Guild stuff, right? We kind of have uh, a crew of us coming together to try to just make sure the build guild is doing well just kind of like a build guild core team to make sure all the other builders have stuff to build and that the product itself is is improving and uh yeah just making sure builders are building things and getting streams and the build guild itself is healthy and we're building cool things and and all that uh i wanted to show off i think is it in let's see so if we click on supernovas here we can see, I think you're showing off this today, Supernovas, but uh, what you can do is, oh, I guess I need to go to my profile and go to one of these builds, like Punk Wallet, and then, oh, I need to edit it, right? Let's see. Yes, How do on, the, I... on the screenshot, you have like this, these like two floating icons. If you go back, you see like the- Here, oh, the... right here. Yeah. Yep, that's the edit button right there. Okay, cool. And then in the edit, there's now this new YouTube URL. Is that is that it, Carlos? Yeah. Yeah. Helping you to kind of have a demo for instead of instead of us getting on one of these calls every time and having a Friday video where we have like five different videos all together, maybe we can have uh, each builder kind of make a short little video about each one of their builds. And and then when you put that in here it'll show up kind of at the top of your uh, uh, project. So really just kind of a nice prominent uh, look at that project. Just kind of like doing a speed run video is gonna be really helpful for each of your projects. So we just need to get better at like submitting builds and having, having the list of builds here and having a video for each build. But then the other thing to remind all the Build Guild builders is just to kind of work on these uh, thumbnail images a little bit better. I feel like this is probably a decent one and this is probably not a good one because it's like just like a big image and it's hard to see. Maybe it should be like a screenshot of the app. Also, that's totally subjective. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not the right way to go. We just need a better way to like have this list look a little nicer, I think. It looks like you already did the the concatenation of the long text too well, yeah i actually like edited you know so i okay. removed like that yeah <laughs> okay okay so it wasn't even a concatenation of the view you just like took some of the text out so it doesn't it wasn't so long okay yeah. cool yeah, yeah yeah cool and also for the for the video if you scroll up to the punk wallet you will see that okay. the, the little like video icon ah yeah, yeah. So you cool click, it will get you to the to use straight it to, to the video on youtube yes. okay cool Awesome. Great. I, and, and I think this is sorted by likes, right? I feel like I, I see the same ones every time. And I wonder if there's a way to kind of like maybe even randomize these a little bit. I think we decided we would sort them by likes, but I kind of see the same thing on the build page every time. I'm wondering if maybe like maybe some chronological stuff, like maybe we see the newest few and then we see the best few or something along those lines, just thinking out loud. But you as a builder, if you're building stuff, make sure you go to your profile and you keep adding builds here. These, these builds are really important to show off what you're building and also show off what the build guild as a whole is building. And then when you do those withdraws, uh, you know, link to those builds so, so we can see what you're withdrawing for. Okay, that's, that's, the, meta, that's the meta update uh, from, from build guild stuff. Anything else to add there, Carlos? Awesome, I think, uh, awesome. Well, the, the thing that we wanted to mention also maybe is that you were saying making like these builds to show like randomly, but for that, I think we first need to do like some curation of the of the builds, yeah. right? Because if not, like maybe like the challenges of some people will show there. So if we I think if we have like this curated list of builds, it will be easier to have like the a, a random list, right? So any any of the builds will be like a good build. So I think we, we need to work on that first, you know, um, on having maybe we can get a list of all the like it um, bills, but then, you know, like we can just like select some of them for this like curated list. The curated yeah. list. Yep. Yes. Yep. I, yep. And I think the goal here would be like someone's trying to learn more about the build guild and they click in and they see the builds and they're like, oh crap, these guys are building all sorts of stuff. That's awesome. Like here's all these products that I can go use. Yeah. 
Okay, one other thing I figured we should show off is this. I think it starts today. We're gonna start a, a juice box hackathon. So the juice box guys, the, the product juice box is kind of like a fundraising platform. And they started by using Scaffold ETH. And now they're kind of like building a more advanced front end, but kind of like uh, uh, paying homage to their roots or whatever. I feel like we, we get all these cool like sca or a Scaffold ETH like alum that have used Scaffold ETH before. So we're kind of just doing collabs with folks like that. And the juice box dudes are uh, setting up this cool hackathon for us. And it's basically like anybody who's building anything with Scaffold ETH, you can participate in this Scaffold ETH juice box hackathon and build some stuff on top of juice box. And there's, there's a pretty good list of like really cool stuff already. And I think uh, a handful of Build Guild members already have something to work on. But if you don't, hit us up and we can get you on a project if you want to hack on this stuff. It's kind of fun to do a you know, temporary quick hackathon where we're just virtual and we just build some cool stuff. I see that happening more in the future for Build Guild, where instead of we have instead of all these like loose projects that we have, maybe we come together for a weekend or a week sometime and we just build with scaffold ETH towards some goal like DAO tooling or random games or something like that. So also this is here, I'll paste this into the chat. So we have the link somewhere. Let's see, I think we're just pasting into Build Guild V3 chat and I will paste it there. Okay, then I think next is Damu to show something off. Is that right, Damu? Are you good to show, show something off? Yes, I'm ready. Do it. Oh, well, let me make sure I have security set up. Okay, you can share your screen. It's all you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yep, we got it. Great. Block difficulty uh, dice game. Yes, I was playing with the new sorts of randomness in the proof of stake uh, network and roster. Uh, now the block uh, difficulty uh, can be used uh, like a sort of randomness. Uh, and first, I, I try to implement the dice challenge using this one, just changing uh, in the dice game using the block difficulty uh, instead of the block number. And then I, I made the real poll, real, real roll trying to attack this. And well, this work because the block difficulty is the same in the block, so you can predict uh, if you will win or not, and just roll the dice if we if we win if you win. So uh, to be able to make it work, you you must use a a, a future block the difficulty. So uh, I implemented a, a a dice game that uh, is uh, split in three stages. The first one is the bidding stage where all the player can bid on the dice number. Uh, each bid costs uh, 0, 0.002 ether. Some seem go to the price and something to the contract. And this is uh, uh, this lasts for 10 blocks, uh, around five minutes in the Robster network. So then there's a cool down stage when uh, nobody can bet and uh, the roll, the dice can be rolled, uh, and this lasts for five blocks. And then there's the running stage when anyone can roll the dice and get a tip uh, for it, uh, and all the winners get the price splitter uh, by the winner count. Uh, like for example, example if two uh, player beat on the winner uh, number and the price system, uh, each one will get uh, five. And if nobody uh, wins, the price is kept for the next uh, round. And this uh, lasts for uh, five blocks. Uh, now, I, 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 I just entered the, this is the, I, I can share the, the link. Nice future Robston, is that right? I just send in the chat. Cool. 
now we are in the bed uh, uh, stage. So all, all we can bet is it's on the Rotten uh, network. Oh, I'm getting in on this. And is so Robston used to be really unpredictable because it was proof of work. Now that it moved to proof of stake, it's probably a much more predictable block times and a kind of like probably a much better test net to play around on. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did you notice that as you were working on yes, it? Yes. 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 Um, well, and, and and then I tried to make a, an ad, a, attack an attack for this, uh, but now it's, it's harder to attack because uh, I made a rigged roll that uh, only roll the dice if uh, uh, the number is uh, zero, one, or two, because uh, well I, I will bet on this number, but uh, uh, you compete with other uh, player. Uh, right, uh, trying to roll the dice, so uh, and this uh, lasts for only uh, five blocks, so uh, you have uh, a, a, a too too many less chances to to force that uh, that their that their, your number uh, is rolled. And it just switched to the waiting to roll. This is really interesting. So you you incentivize someone to make the roll, and there's a single roll. I was I was thinking it would be more exactly. like I stake money, and then later on I have to like turn in my my ticket for that roll. But actually, you have everybody betting, and then you have a cool off period, and then you have a single roll, and everyone's bet goes against that single roll. And you've incentivized yeah. someone to make that single roll. So it could be someone that's not even involved in the project, just someone that's incentivized to do so. Kind of like the, the Web3 cron job I use as an example a lot. Exactly, yes. Uh, so uh, maybe someone that even doesn't play can roll the, the dice just for the thief for doing it. Uh, and if you try to, well, you, you can try to, to force to get your, your number in the same way uh, that before, but uh, you you compete with, with other trying to roll the dice too. There's even probably some MEV in there where if someone could make money, get paid back, they could front run you and get paid to roll the dice or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so so I don't understand the bet. So uh, it, I, we can't bet right now, right? We're in the current stage of rolling. But when when there was just the the input field and the bet uh, button, do I do I put in like a one or a two? Are we betting way? Like what are we? What's the this one or the, the two? When you... the, the dice the dice number. That oh, you want. It's a dice. okay, okay. It's a, so a extra dice uh, from zero to uh, fifteen. Okay, so you put in a zero to fifteen, and your bet is always a constant. Everybody has a constant bet. They just all pick a number. And then if that number comes up on the roll, those people get paid. Exactly. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Are we betting again? Is it up? All right, I'm yeah. definitely betting. Yeah. Here we go, here we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, just one through 15, got it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm seeing some bets come in. <laughs> cool. Okay. And, and so there is still some way to attack this. Is that right? Basically, you would. Yes, because the, the, the roll, uh, the dice is rolled when, the, when someone uh, called the roll the dice. So you can't uh, revert if you don't get uh, the number that you want. But you could have a roller the... contract that you program in, hey, only turn this in if it's a 15 and and I bet on 15 and then you would send money to your roller contract and it would only send the roll the dice command if the block difficulty and nonce and everything lined up to, to roll a 15. But you're yes. competing with a whole bunch of other people exactly. that are yeah. like and you, incentivized. And you have, exactly. And you have only five blocks to, to get your number. So uh, 
uh, the chances are very low. Well, if uh, if they are another player, but uh, uh, if they are no player, you will get uh, what you bet. So uh, it doesn't make sense. Cool. Okay, and now we're waiting to roll. It just went into the roll. So yeah, when did is roll? this this maybe the, even the cool down period? Is that what this one is? Yes, this is the cool, cool. cool down period. Got a lot of good bets in there. Got some sevens, got a 12. Oh, multiple people bet on 12. 14. All right. Someone's going to win here. We got we to gotta have it happen. <laughs> so we've got $25 locked in the contract. And it costs like a buck to roll. Is that right? A dollar 72? Is that what? What, what does it cost? No, this is the, the no, uh, I don't know. But uh, this, oh, is okay. the, the, this is the rugged. Rigged roll. The... Oh, that's just the rigged roll contract. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> but we're waiting for Robston blocks, but they're way like way more accountable now, right? Like yeah. It'll it'll be a pretty deterministic amount of time. Now, now we can roll. Okay, I, roll. roll. Everyone roll. roll. <laughs> I'm rolling. Here we go. <laughs> Oh man, waiting for MetaMask. I'm not going to be a slow, uh, fast roller. <laughs> oh, uh, Carlos, roll the Carlos hit it, or Carlos got the roll. How do oh, we see what? the roll? Oh, we see the roll over there. He rolled a nine. Well, oh, oh, Carlos man. was the the previous one. Oh, okay. Fourteen was what was rolled, but 14. he won. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever Carlos. got that one. <laughs> yeah. And so, so now the contract is empty. Is that right? The twenty-five dollars that was in the contract went to no, Carlos the, for no, getting the number the, right. The, the the contract have some fun, but the price, okay. uh, uh, the contract have this, uh, okay. this balance, but the price is uh, reset to zero. Okay, very cool. That's a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. 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 Great. Great build. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see Thank what you. happens with randomness as we move to proof of stake and we have that, that randomness there. I was under the assumption that it was going to be like good randomness that we could use, but it, we can attack it the same way we can attack block hash. So it seems like it's like not that, not that nice of a thing. Yeah. Yes. Block yes. difficulty is a little disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. That's going to be the <laughs> yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and maybe there is some part of that because there is like this Randau ceremony that's happening by the validators within proof of stake. So maybe there's a, some way to get access to that or something. But I feel like previous block hash and previous difficulty are equally, you know, tweakable. So what, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I guess the Covan Casino will still not continue until we figure out better randomness. <laughs> Okay, I think maybe Supernova's next. Supernova has a uh, ZK board game. It looks like you use the board game from Amsterdam and then added some uh, like zero knowledge stuff to it for moves. So go ahead, Supernova, and take it away if you want to share your screen and show us what you've built. Yeah. And share the link too. Oh, Damu, could you share the link to your code also? And I'll paste that in. Yeah, so this is the game. And uh, as you said, I used Damu's board, but uh, it wasn't working very correctly. So I, I had to replace it. And so this is a, a, a small board game where a uh, player can land uh, based on the coordinates, so it is a 10 by 10 board game. And so what happens is you connect the wallet and you register and you can select where you have to land. So if I select 515, uh, I will land here. And these inputs will go to the circuits that I will show you. And then uh, the proof will generate in the front end and then the uh, hash will be generated. So here, like catch at 256, here's uh, different hashes like Poseidon and 
uh, other so i have used mimc sponge has that uh, so this location has will be stored uh, to the contract and so the, uh, the end of player can move left right uh, up and down and so if i click on right what will happen is the uh, the correct coordinates uh, are stored in my uh, local storage so this is the assumption in uh, gt games and when i will click right what happens will uh, we will again generate a proof uh, about my previous location and that i am uh, going to the correct location so i will show you that uh, sometime later and then what happens is so along the way you you give a public variable uh, called a zone so the game is divided into 10 zones so suppose i am here uh, everyone can see that i am in zone 6 and when i will move here uh, there will be a public variable in the contract that will show that i am in zone 7 so other players can see the all other players zone and this is a dark zone where no one knows uh, who is here uh, this is basically a i could not make the proof uh, for this zone due to some maths so i just made it like a dark zone and so uh, I will just do the contract and stuff. So the basically the structure is there are three. Yeah, so there are there are the circuits, the contacts, and the front end. So let me show you how this build is created. So first the user registers in the game. So he will input say four and comma five. And this is a salt, this is a random number. So this is necessary so that uh, a tagger cannot brute force the, uh, the location has uh, of the user. So these are private variables. No one can see what the user has input. And also the player will input the zone which is landing into and then what will happen is we, uh, we will verify that he he is inputting the variables within the constraints of the board so the game is 10 by 10 we will check that he has input between 0 to 10 so this is what is checking the upper range and the lower range and and they are all checking the row range of the x and y variables as you can see this is the a variable and i am checking that a is greater than zero and this is the condition range which is checking so if a is greater than zero and a is always less than or equal to 10 so the coordinates entered are within the game for constraints and could you scroll up to your signals could you scroll up to the signals again real quick one yeah. more time yeah. which ones are private is what i wanted to see there none of them are private is that right no, no, no. These okay. three are private. And oh, those are private. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah. they're not marked private there. So that, that yeah, usually you, yeah, no, I this, see. Yeah. yeah. So, so oh. uh, if we do not mark them, it, uh, it is considered private. And uh, in the below, I have made the zone is public here. So the zone is public, and the rest of them, which are not declared, are uh, automatically as private. And okay, so, cool. After that, what uh, this is the hash like catch 256 So what I'm taking is I'm taking the X and Y along with the salt to prevent brute force and C will be the output. This will be the hash. And now uh, suppose the user enters zone four. I will check that his zone and his coordinates match. So if he if his if his location is three comma five, his he should be in zone four. So here I am checking that the user has entered the correct zone or not. And so this is the formula for calculating the zone. I have, these are, I have declared just two variables. And so if user enters zone four, this variable become three and this will become four. So here I check that if the user has entered X as three, then and the, this is four as zone was entered four. So three should be less than four. So on the, uh, so the right side of the board game, you can uh, think I imagine. And uh, similarly, so this is, this is also three and this will be three. So I am checking that 
a should be greater than equal to 3 so if these two conditions are met then the user has entered the correct zone according to this this board game and then yeah this c will be output at hash and so after registering this i will show you the process i was using a wagme for the first time so there are some ui issues how was it did you like it yeah well, i did not like the docs very much <laughs> they have some ways yeah. to go on the docs huh I think Shervan yeah. has a couple extra hooks he'd like to add to wag me too. Yeah, very much needed. So I will just connect the wallet. Let's see if this works. Think I was registered before with this wallet. Oh, I think my impure RPC has gone. I think <laughs> that I, happens. I received a message. <laughs> yeah. That that happened to me like live doing a demo. My Infura fell over, and I had to like throw in an alchemy key or a new key like on stage in Amsterdam. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, I just the So once the user registers, and then this is the move circuit. So here, what happens is the user enters the uh, his last location coordinates. These are also private. So. Previously, if he was at three comma four, he will enter three four, and this will be the new location. So, if he goes from three comma four to right, he will insert four comma four here, and the salt will be inserted the same as he used in the register. So, this is a flaw, and this is an assumption in most of the ZB games that if the user loses his salt, then he has to re-register, or the proof will not work. So this salt and these coordinates are stored in the local storage for that. And similarly, he will input his zone. And the first output is the location hash of the previous coordinates. And this is the location hash of the new coordinates. So here I will hash the first coordinates. And here I will hash again the new coordinates. Here I am checking the range just like that similarly, and here I am checking the zones. Again, the same thing. And so you see the zone is made public. And so you can say that the user can just enter the wrong inputs. So what happens is in the contracts. So whenever you move first. This is the DK group that goes to check that all the conditions are met. And then second, what happens is, so the input, this is the input uh, which the circum files uh, outputs. So there are, so there were one uh, public variable, as you can see, this was a public variable and these are two outputs. So the input array is three length. And the first, uh, the input array first will be the output A, that is this, the old location has. So what, what I'm doing is I am checking that the player dot location, which was saved previously, uh, is equal to input zero. And if not, we will reverse. So this means the user is cheating and he has entered uh, the wrong coordinates of his previous location. And then if, we, if this passes, I will again update his location to the input one array. Input one is Basically, uh, the new output B. So this will be the new location. I will update this. And so moving cost, some health, it will reduce his health. And if player's health is less than eight, he, we will just remove him from the game. So this is a move function. And so uh, coming to the attack thing. 
so as you see we know every player's zone the zone is made public zone is this uh, zone was public so uh, input to will be the zone so this is stored in the contract so everyone knows others uh, zone so what we'll do is suppose i know the uh, ls is uh, zone uh, i think she is in d comma 4 so i will just enter her address and her coordinates and so they will check that if i am not dead uh, and this is the the attacker then uh, that i am updating using mapping so what happens is i am attacking uh, her player and these are the coordinates that i have guessed and this is the bull you see the attack the attack is active or not and this is the attacker address and so what happens is whenever you move you have to check this condition that this attack is always if attack is true then we will reverse so if you are being attacked you cannot move so first you will have to go to the defend function and defend yourself and in defending you have to give your current location proof that if the 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 attacker's guess is right or not so this is the circum file that i will show this is the proof that the proofs are true or not and then what happens is if attack is active we will uh, revert and so these are the main uh, functions so here we are checking that input zero is not equal to the player's location and if they are equal then the guess is wrong and so this is in second part yeah so the attacker just uh, the defender just gives this location x and y using the local storage and the same salt output is the location and the location is being outputted and here the guess will be made public so that we know that the defender is inputting the coordinates that the attacker guessed so that is not cheating so here we are just saying that he has inputted the correct location that the attacker guessed and is if not then he is uh, is cheating basically and so what happens is if the player's health is greater than the attacker's health he will gain some health from attacker and if player's health is equal then the attack will be null and else the attacker's player health will be more so basically this is the game and uh, i can add erc Twenty two points instead of anything. Yeah, just yeah. This is the game basically. Oh, might might go back. Okay, so uh, the players' moves and the players' location. those are hidden signals and you're proving where you're moving by saying this is where i was before here's the salt and here's where i'm moving to and so players are sort of in zero knowledge moving around a board and then you can choose to attack someone by guessing their location and if you guess their location correctly then you take some of their health and you earn some of their health is is that the right way of thinking about it yeah and the location as is uh, stored on the contract like dark forest basically awesome that's really cool so the so i just i've just gotten into like like building these little circuits and doing zk stuff and i why why aren't your signals marked marked as public in those in those circuits like you have so, it, yeah maybe i don't know what i'm talking about though <laughs> like i'm brand new to this stuff so i don't know but it seemed like some of those should yeah some of these should be marked as private right yeah so the reason the zone is public is because i want uh, everyone to see this so that everyone knows the other player zone so that they can guess they have something to guess for and regarding the other things you just said the defend dot circum for example these two are made public so the attacker guesses these two coordinates uh, in the contract we take them yeah. from the contract and the defender will input these so suppose uh, it is possible that defender will just input the wrong guesses to prove that his location is not what the attacker thinks so to prevent this we make this inputs public and then uh, the this you can see here so this is the input array 
this input uh, the public variables returns through this array and so the first uh, input array one will be the tagger guess so if the user has not inputted the correct guess we will revert so these basically uh, cheating and this similarly this is the y coordinate so these two should match or else the user is uh, cheating so this is the reason uh, some of them should be made public uh, so maybe maybe it's just because I don't know how circum the language works, but does it just default to private then? As you as you have x yeah, one and yeah. and y one up there, you've just you have them marked as signals. You don't need to put the private yeah. in there because it's just it's no. it's inherently private unless you put a public with it. Is that is that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Today yeah, I learned. Yeah. That's 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 what I was confused about. Okay. Cool. Awesome. That's a I really cool. That's a great ZK build. Uh, you should put the link to that so I can link to other people so other people can kind of like fork this and play around with yeah. this. I think that like ZK gaming is just gonna have, you know, so so many cool impl implications here with, with the blockchain and ZK gaming. Yeah. We see a lot of things like Dark Forest and a lot of ZK games emerging and they're being played over on like rollups on top of side chains. So the scalability is still not there in terms of most of these L1s and even L2s, but they're getting there and and playing a yeah, I mean you could play this is you you basically built something similar to like battleship, right? Where you you have like battleship you're setting up like all these moves and then like the other person can attack and you you can't see what the other person has which is like traditionally really hard to build on a deterministic public blockchain. But with ZK tech, yeah. you can kind of prove these kinds of things without revealing your moves. Very cool build. Yeah. Let's see, paste that, paste that link in. Oh, I guess I could find you on Build Guild too, but paste, yeah, copy, paste that link into the I chat just so I have it. it. Okay, cool. It. Awesome. Okay, I, I'll, I'll steal the screen back just to like, make a very, very uh, uh, simple look at the same thing. So I'm looking at on, if you go to Build Guild and go to Calvin stuff, he has like four levels of learning how to do ZK builds. And I'll paste those into the chat here. But he has a Circon starter kit and then a Circon that talks to a contract and then a ZK like membership proof and then a ZK voting example. I think these are similar to what you've built, but just like way more simplified down and you can kind of like follow the readme to get started. But uh, what's cool is I've, I've got this up right now. I have it all installed. Let me see if I need to deploy the contract still. I can't remember if I, oh, I just did. Looks like it'll reuse it. But what, what he has you do and this is this is way more simplified, right? But uh, you use Circom, which is a language uh, that you write these things called circuits, which are basically these functions that have some kind of signals that come in and then some signal that goes out. And, and some of this could be private and some of this could be public. So it's kind of like a little machine that we both can share. Uh, the, the best analogy I've heard is like a bouncer at a bar. There's, there's basically, um, imagine that we have a couple little machines and uh, I take my ID that shows that I'm 21 and I put it into a machine and that generates a receipt. And then I take that receipt and I hand it to the bouncer and he puts it in his machine and it proves that I'm 21 without the bouncer having to see my ID. It's like, it keeps my ID private, but it proves that I'm, I'm 18, right? Or 21 or whatever it, it needs to be. So, so you, you, you can have this kind of hidden information, but still it's cryptographically proved. And then you can kind of have that proof go into a smart contract and have the proof done on chain also. So he, let's see, let's see if I can run this thing. So you go through and you follow uh, the, the instructions and then you run a yarn circom and that compiles this circuit and does some other stuff. I think it actually even like writes a smart contract in here for this, the, the circuit prover in Solidity. I think you end up getting uh, a smart contract here too, maybe not. But then, so here's the verifier contract. 
which like it does this like curve pairing stuff that is like way over my head. But this verify proof is kind of the key here. And it just like the A, B, C stuff that he was proving in there, like this is the same thing. I'm still learning, still trying to figure out how all this works. But what you get is uh, this app over here. And we can, uh, let's see, if I go to the example UI, I can come up with any number, right? Like 82214, our old zip code back in the day. I can grab that as my input, okay? And that can be hidden. And what I wanna do is put in that input without anybody actually seeing that, right? So I have this hash, so this is hidden and then there's the hash of it. So we wanna prove that. If I do a yarn circom, I think it's gonna give us the proof that that is correct, that this hashes to this. And then uh, you put that into, let's see, now it should be done. Let's see if I need to reload. Oh, wait, wait, I need to put in this new number. I need to say this new number hashes to this number. And I can prove that without actually exposing this number. So this is what I end up exposing. I end up exposing this, that large hash. Ooh, something doesn't look right. Those shouldn't be the same. Let's see what happens if I verify this. Oh yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't exactly know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Still, still getting, and this will do. This will do the proof inside the car, the smart contract. So instead of just proving the the data, uh, yeah. So oh, I, I see. So then it moves us into this state, and you can kind of keep track of a state in a contract and verify the proof. Yeah, I don't know. Still, still learning, but I'm pretty sure this is like able. I'm able to like update smart contract state without exposing this like secret variable that I have here. And and there's a lot more that you can do with that later on in the in the tutorials. I'm not doing a great job of showing it off yet, but uh, after I get through all these tutorials, I will understand it better and I'll be able to show it off better. <laughs> but good, good build Supernova. That was like super complex and I look forward to seeing like lots of cool ZK games. Good build Damu, getting getting some some gambling going on Robson. Who, 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 who's not into some Robson gambling? Great, great stuff on the Build Guild. We're kicking off the Juice Box Hackathon too. So if you're looking for something to work on or something, grab a grab a quick like one one week hack on Juice Box. Awesome. Anybody else? Any any closing thoughts? All right, all right, all right. Happy Bowtie Friday, everybody. Thanks for coming along. See you. <laughs>